Okay, so with me this week is Kev from the Film Guff podcast. How are you doing, Kev? I'm doing fine. How are you? I'm not too bad. It's Kev with a C, isn't it? It is, yeah. My dad's got a sense of humour. <laughs> <laughs> the only reason why I mention that for is, um, do you get annoyed with people misspelling your name a lot? Because I, I certainly do. Being Kurt, I get called Kirk and yeah. get to put a C in front of it and stuff. Or... Not particularly. I think it became quite um, blasé about the whole thing, you know, but especially with yeah. officialdom because they seem to have a lot of problems with it. I think it took about three attempts for, for my first driving license. So, oh God. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, kind of used to it. Um, I get pronounced all sorts of different ways as well, like seven or seventy or whatever. You know, it's just right. bonkers. Yeah, I was the same. I and mean, I've got um, I've got somebody at work who, even though I've got a name badge, still refuses to call me Kurt. He calls me Kirk, <laughs> and it's like I'm, cake. You know, my name, yeah, my name badge is right next to me. But never mind. That's one of those things. <laughs> um, so your your podcast is, um, I think it's around thirty episodes deep now somewhere yeah. around there isn't it yeah. yeah um so just before we go into the film guff i just want like to get some, some background on, on yourself kev really just to to give the listeners some idea of where you've come from and, and um and what you've done in the past so mm-hmm. what is your background you mentioned in your first episode that you did on film guff that you didn't don't have any formal university education same here same um here. so um so you mentioned you mentioned that. Um, so, but where, where did you come in from? Where are you coming from? What's your kind of angle going into um, your first podcast, whether it be Film Guff or anything you've done prior? Really, how how has that all come about? Well, prior to Film Guff, I were in Laps Gamer Radio, where um, I did that for. Well, I've just finished doing that actually this year um, after three years, but that was kind of. Um, an introduction to gaming for people that had not played it in years. We were all roughly about the same age group. You know, we were all sort of dads and sort of later in in life kind of thing. And um, it was quite a neat angle, you know, and it it was quite fun. But um, I felt, you know, my real passion is films. But like I said, I've not got any formal qualifications or anything like that. I'm certainly not a paid critic or anything. But, um, me and Ali that I do the podcast with, we both love our films, but we do it from a kind of um, Joe Schmo, you know, Joe Public perspective of it. You know, we just go, yeah, this is good. This is crap. This is good. This is crap. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And I think probably a lot of people will appreciate that as well. It's, it's fantastic that we get to to hear, you know, basically, nah, not, I'm not doing Suicide Squad without him. Um, without, without, <laughs> yeah. <you know. laughs> How how did you um where where did the idea for podcasting come about? You say, say you've done that for around three years prior. Where where did the 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 drive and the desire come from from wanting to do that? Well, it was a bizarre one because um it was set up by Lee Howard from Movie Matters, um which is a podcast that was a film podcast again, and he came about with the idea, and there was two or three of us that came in on with him, and he got me roped in because I had a studio i already i've had well god what how hmm, what year is it i've had about 30 years experience in a studio so (laughs) i'm kind of used to a recording environment um but recording um bands and punk bands and stuff is quite different to recording podcast it's a different discipline altogether as far as mastering and what have you but uh yeah so he he dragged me in for that basically because i've got the know-how and the tech um, I could do that, but the first episode I remember going, "Good grief, this is terrifying!" I don't, I don't actually want to hear my own voice. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's um, I, I'm, I was the same, really. I, the, I, not necessarily my own voice, because I'm quite happy with my voice. I, similar to you, I, I come from a from a band background. I play yeah. in a band, and um, I, I've done uh, function work for for over twenty years now. So. Have been being in front of a crowd and 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 talking and and doing disco and things like that isn't a problem to me. Yeah, same but, here. But I do with, jail with, as well. Yeah, so but with that, not necessarily having set patter or or um, being able to, um, you, but you've got you, you're in your comfort zone. You know what you're doing. Yeah. So when somebody comes to you and says, "What do you think of this episode?" and you're like, "Uh, what? Uh." <laughs> yeah, but everything's fine. Yeah, uh, um, which which is where where I where I came from, and it's good you've you brought up the studio because that's something that I had noticed as I was going through your podcast uh, um, over the past few weeks. Really, just been listening here and there where I can mm. was um, something that I wanted to pick up because it's not something that I would necessarily um, ask 
most people on, on the show. So, and because you've got the studio, I think it's worth asking. So, going if we move into the film, film guff and, and the podcast that you've you've formulated before, how does how from recording the episode and and you getting your your um party waveforms together and looking on your screen at what you need to edit how does that all come together and how, how do you view editing from from that point of view from literally the you know hour long two hour long podcast that you've got ready down to edit how did how do you go through what's the steps that you go through to uh to do that edit the first steps uh, obviously from the recording perspective we record separately everybody always records in wave format um we don't use mp3s because um you lose too much audio you know you, mm. you got a lot of messing around with a lot of artifacts um i get the separate waves together and um i use um adobe audition to edit on because right. it's such a powerful tool um what i'll normally do is assemble everything first get everything so that it's all running in time together and then um basically look at look at um you know, basically bits that don't need to be there. Um, yeah. Stuff where you'll have a host, they'll just start repeating themselves or something like that. You know, you, you'll you find that you'll go through the same message again later on in the talk or, or you'll find something's just not working because you've got a really good position on the conversation that everything's on quite a high and then somebody could come in and say something and it just kills it, you yeah. know, or sl- slows the momentum down. You don't want it. You've got to be a firm editor. You know, you've got to be able to actually sit there and think, no. From a, you've got to be able to distance yourself and take a, take a step back and go, really, does this still work? You know, so mm. it tends to be better if you give yourself sort of a few days at least to cool off and then come back. If you are actually on the recording session, that is. I found that recently when I've um, when I've looked at because I've done a few edits recently, um, yeah. not just on this podcast but on other ones that I'm on, and um, I found that the I, I, it's still a learning process for me because my edits in the in the past when I've been um, on the band and, and whatever where I've needed to do stuff, it's kind of just chopping here and there for you know, so it makes it more segue really rather than anything else. Yeah, but um, but what I found is that you, you need that you, you need to I do a general quick edit. I'm um, pretty much straight after I do the recording, yeah, and then come back to it two or three days later, and, and just keep chopping away at it a little bit, a little bit at a time when I when I get time. Really, going back to where you were, so you, so you do that. You you've come back to it a few days later. Do you do you um, EQ it and take all the noise reduction and all that type of thing? Yes. Do you sort of get into that quite quite significantly then. Yeah, the, this once I've done the assembly, this is where the real nitty gritty comes down because um, obviously, like I'm running on one at the minute where. Um, the guests that we got on didn't realise that you weren't supposed to uh, have any speakers on. So I've got the problem of he he's got all our audio as well, you know. So we've got a, a lot of bleed off, um, and he it, it just really sort of nails you to a cross basically because you've got to make sure that everything's sequ- sequenced up mm, solid. Yeah, and. There's parts of that conversation you don't want in anyway. So um, the next point is to actually cut it down. And sometimes it's basically just going through the individual track and cutting out all the bits that you don't want. You know, get rid of mute all the audio that you're not actually going to be using. So that's the uh, next bit. And that's the bit that takes the longest, I would say. And then, of course, there's throwing in the music and effects and film clips and stuff like that. Um, so what format do you normally um, put it out? You mentioned, obviously, you you, record, you get everything in WAVE format as the, yeah. as the, the source material. Do, do you output WAVE and then upload it, or does it go to a lossless, lossless file, or how, how do you do that once you're ready to upload it? And do you have any, any problems with um, compatibility issues with certain podcasters? No, not at all, no. Because all I'll do is I'll, I'll put it to WAVE as a final mix, then check that. And then, when I'm finally happy, which <laughs> honestly can take a while for me to be finally happy. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> um, once I've done that, uh, I will then change it over to MP3. And it's always at 128 kilobytes per second because it's the quickest and easiest. You know, uh, nobody wants to be able to um, fill the phone up with four podcasts, you know. so <laughs> <laughs> from, from the look of it on um, some of the credits that you actually do, the mu- you've done the music as well. Yeah. You've mixed that music as well, haven't you? Yeah. So, yeah, so it was uh, it was certainly some... Um, I was listening to it on a, a night time at work when 
um, I was just sitting in the bar doing some paperwork and I put it on uh, the first episode and I was like, oh, well, this is good. Mm. So moving back to the, the Film Guff pod- podcast, um, you do that with, with Ali. How, how do you record that? Are, are you are you in the same room? Are you um, miles away? How, where, how does that come together? We're miles away. Um, he's in Derby. I'm in Doncaster. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> we've, we've, we've met a few times. Um, but yeah, we're, we're just good mates. And um, we talk quite often, you know, without recording podcasts. But um, we use Google Hangouts because it's um, just a really solid platform, you know, and we can talk all all night basically on that and it doesn't drop out. You don't get the problem of Skype going a bit weird or echoey or, you know, time dilation. Yeah, yeah. I have I recently had some time dilation issues. The first time I've had it as well where I was like, oh, hang on, this mm. wave file seems to be slipping quite a bit. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, that, 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 is, um, that is good to know and... It's something I might look into in the future. When when I was doing Laps Gamer, um, we had a guy in Canada, and um, it was great, you know. But obviously, using Skype, um, he used to have quite some crazy time dilation issues. You know, we would have times where he would be losing about, I would say, forty five seconds for every four minutes. You right. Know, yeah. You would you you really have to try and cut it and then bring it back into line you would the edits would take a long time with that so the google hangout is kind of the um probably the way forward really the only problem that i have with google hangouts currently at the moment i'm probably trying to do this is getting other people to get onto it so as you say with the time slip dilation thing it's definitely became an issue over the last few weeks for me and it's something that i'll probably look into so without a doubt it's something i need to look at the, the main reason that we record um via wave and do it locally you know, rather than recording a call, is because you, not only do you have the editing flexibility, you also have a rock solid audio at either end. You know, so you can actually have a high quality sounding podcast. I mean, I've heard podcasts that are literally a recording of a Skype call, and it's shocking sometimes. And you think, really, if you are that passionate about what you're doing, then you've already there. You've only got one step to do, and that's just actually take care when you're recording it. I mean, I mean, even I've mentioned this on a on a previous podcast, so I won't go too much into it. But even uh, it's simple and quite quite cheap to to get going. I mean, I know you oh, use, yeah. you use Adobe. Yeah. Um, I, I mean, I use Audacity, and and it's the Audacity is a free program that anyone can use. So just having that having that option of of being able to record your side and and my side. And having that sent and match up is is streets ahead of, of of a normal phone call. I mean, sometimes you might get really lucky with Skype and you get a clear call, but it's it's very rare. <laughs> very rare. Okay, so on with regards to film guff, then. Yeah, so obviously you and Ali have got together, and you look at, you look at films from as you say from a general perspective. Do you have any a particular favorite type of film that you tend to aim go for, or do you just? think if a film's good it's good or it's crap it's crap how, how do you how do you kind of come up with the um the idea of what films to do and and what are your type favorite type of films well it's a weird one because we come to it from two ends of the spectrum really because i like a lot of art house and horror and a lot of foreign stuff and and ali likes his action his blockbusters you know his sort of new and now his comic book films i mean like for instance we're doing a black and white movie this week that's coming out actually this should be coming out later this week um but uh, the first thing he said when um he saw that it was a black and white film was oh god no black and white <laughs> like oh great you're gonna love it when we do a foreign one. <laughs> oh god yeah yeah but it's it's sort of flip side you know because um he's wanting us to do uh the big blockbusters and stuff and sometimes i just sit there and think oh my god no really mm. oh yeah, okay, right. it's got car chases and explosions. Fine. But that kind of works anyway. It works in the dynamic because we would just sit there t- calling both of us idiots, you know, because <laughs> we are. <laughs> We're both a yeah. couple of idiots, but we just like our things. Yeah. And is that the reason why you um, do the podcast the way that you've done it? I've, I haven't listened to some of the later ones. I know you've got guests on the later ones, but yeah. generally you have you pick a film for each other and have another film as the main um main showcase as such yeah is that the reason why you did that yeah partly because of that because um we were just trying to get some sort of format and some sort of theme running and we figured picking three films you know two that would um give us homework to each other and then the third that would share 
you know, it, it seemed like a good idea to get us into it. Mm. And we've we've broken off a bit now because obviously we're having the guests on. Um, it's yeah. changed the dynamics. What we do is we'll talk about what films we've watched recently, and then right. the guest will bring in a film, and we then have to do that as our homework. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I was going to ask that as well. You, you are about thirty episodes around the thirty episode mark. Yeah. I don't think you've quite got there yet. Um, from what I've released, seen. released, I think we're up to twenty six. Um, but I've got until January sorted out for next year. So. Right, okay. So you've got up to about the 30 episode mark. So um how has it changed over time? Has has um have how have you felt that the the um the podcast itself has changed? I mean, you mentioned half mentioned there about the having the special guests, but has anything else over the course of the run changed as, over those 30 episodes? There has been a quite bit of change because we started off with the three film format and then realized that sometimes we just wanted to talk about other stuff and we thought as well as that sticking to a strong format yeah, fair enough. It might be a good idea for people that are listening to it regularly, but you might actually be cutting your nose off to spite your face by limiting, you know, what mm. you're um, talking about. Um, the, there's people that joined in with the, we did a, a show on as favourite Bond episodes. Um, right. And that was just basically talking about the James Bond franchise. And that was because his backs were against the wall. And um, right. we didn't have a great deal of time, but we wanted to get something recorded. So we just picked that up and sent out a message on Twitter on the morning. And then by the evening, we'd got loads of feedback. You know, everybody's right. like talking about the favorite Bond. Um, <laughs> yeah. So, <laughs> so we, we just kind of play it fast and loose now. We don't bother with the three films as much, but we do sort of set each other up for it, if you like. But it's more in the background because obviously at the moment with the guests, that's become the, the whole thing. Um yeah. I tend to like to watch a film at least three or four times if I'm going to talk about it, you know, and um, having guest films in, it's like sometimes I've never even heard of it, you know, and you need to be able to watch it first time just to take it in as a film, second time to look at it a bit more and get more of a hang of it and see if there's any bits you missed. Mm. Third is from the critical angle where you're thinking, you're trying to sort of pick faults with it, you know, and check for plot holes and see if you can sort of, not bomb it and destroy it, but comic bomb it, bomb it you know, um, yeah. you know, just have a, a comedy run through of it. And then the fourth one is just to uh, pick out my favourite bits of audio, if you like. You know, yeah. it, they, this is where I'm actually watching it without actually opening my eyes and listening to it. Right, okay. Yeah, so you're just getting a, an idea and, and obviously getting whatever you need from it as well, yeah. from like, like the soundtrack and things like that. Yeah. Well, isn't there? Yeah. That kind of effort. I mean, the soundtrack, the soundtrack thing, we, we did an episode on um, Ocean's Eleven uh, not long back, about a month ago, and it was quite funny because there's quite a lot of David Holmes music that I could use, but um, there was some passages where the David Holmes tracks wouldn't work because they they were um, too long for timing or too short for timing. So I ended right. up just recording stuff on my own. It just made stuff that sounded like David Holmes. <laughs> right. <okay. laughs> and uh, nobody can spot the difference either. So I'm quite chuffed with that. Oh, fantastic. That's it. That, that's <laughs> Got away with it. Exclusive, exclusive. <laughs> um, so you, you mentioned there about watching it three or four times. I mean, I would assume that if you're watching something like Eraserhead or Inception, it may be more than three or four times. <laughs> <laughs> um, because it, it, I recently um, recorded an Eraserhead um, episode. I'm not sure if that's going to air now, but Love that um, I, 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 I must have watched it about 15 times to, to get into the podcast. And even then, I'm still going... <laughs> I just don't know. <laughs> I, I do. I do love it to bits. I do love it to yes. bits. Yes, it's a fantastic film. But just to try and analyse it is, is God knows. I, I think there where must be thesis start? on it. <laughs> where, where would you start? You know, the the man in the planet is is just mind boggling enough, let alone anything else. Um, and obviously, likes of Inception, which I listened to the Inception um, podcast. That was one of your early ones. Yeah, um, where, which was which was quite good and. The, the way you link it with with heat and with the sound again with the soundtrack disappearing, yeah. Um, and I also link um, Chris of Northern seems has that with have that with heat actually because um, I think the the obviously the Dark Knight is very influenced by heat, especially the beginning the the bank robbing scene. Mm-hmm. It's it's very kind of Michael Mann. So so it was nice to hear sort of familiar opinions on on those type of things as yeah. well. Yeah. So. 
with um so you you've got the obviously you've got your 30 episodes in and you, you are changing the way you are which i think is a good thing really i think i, I like it with the fact that you've realized or um you know it's it's not just all about just being formulaic and you know and that can get boring to be absolutely honest with you yeah. sometimes so so having a, a bit of mix is, is a good thing to do and hopefully i'll find something to to mix in with mine so we'll see how we get get there um you also early on had a discussion about netflix and and amazon because one the one thing that your podcast tends to do is look at films that you can get online or buying dvd and things like yeah. that um and i think that was because the, not all of you were going to the cinema is that is that right exactly or, yeah 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 i, I yeah. tend to never go and ali's the one that always goes <laughs> right right okay so it's a happy medium just to have ones that you can you can physically watch yeah so um and you did have a, a short discussion and probably that's changed a bit over the over the year i would have thought because um netflix you were discussing about the fact that they're doing a lot more indie films a lot more indie um in indie um, tv shows and mm. amazon were kind of were the ones and we've also got on the horizon the disney kind of um, streaming service coming as well mm. so i can see it fracturing and where do you think that's going to to end up what, what are your opinions on that really it's it's getting more and more impossible to um find anything on netflix now that's worth watching to be quite honest um mm. because now you open up i don't know whether you've seen your front panel just lately but it seems to be an invasion of netflix originals you know where it's um lots of tv series lots of binge on this yeah. and you know not films that you even heard of you know never mind think oh it might be worth a shot there, there are some good films on there there's okia for a start off that's a great film but mm. you know it, it's just hit and miss and very scattershot and bizarrely amazon is the one that was always the sort of weaker of the two but they seem to have come on since netflix have started kicking out studios um amazon looks like they've been picking them up if you like so you're actually yeah. getting a decent selection on there now but they still don't cater for me from for my tastes quite a lot um so i tend to go to film struck which right, is okay. classic cinema you know but it's not just classic cinema but as in 1938 battleship Potem- potemkin or something like that although it is on there um mm. but it's just 70s and 60s stuff as well it's really good uh channel yeah would have the things like the Parallax View and Manchurian Candidate and things yeah. like that on it. And yeah. Stuff, yeah, in fact, Manchurian Candidate is on there at the minute, and All the President's Men, I think, is the big one for them at the minute. But, right. Yeah, so it's getting more and more expensive, if you like, because the more you, channels you're looking at, you know, the the reason I've still got Netflix, I would have binned it off, is because my um, four year old likes to put Netflix on for Netflix Kids, which yeah. is fair enough. Yeah, um, Captain Underpants has saved a lot of days. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and, and what, what I've noticed, I was speaking to, um, I, I work in a in a projection room as it happens uh, on occasion. That, that that's I started my the job I'm in at the moment is a, a managerial position, awesome. but I started in projection and I still have a um, have a input and I've actually built a second cinema screen as it happens over the last couple of weeks, but. Um, I have an input on there and I always um, I'm willing to help out when needed so I'm, I'm generally in projection maybe once a week doing uh, like a live streaming or, or something like that wow. and yeah so it's 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 nice to keep my, my, my fingers in there but the, the the thing that's obviously picking up for me I kind of lost my trail of thought there but the thing that's picking up for me for for, for cinema is the likes of Netflix bringing out films I think the the Kurt Russell one is coming out soon. I think that's going to be a general release, but also on Netflix. Yeah. And Annihilation was bought recently, and the Cloverfield one, which was absolutely awful. And <laughs> yeah. I, I, I was so looking forward to seeing it. I love the Cloverfield franchise. I love the idea, but it just doesn't work. It just doesn't seem to be working. Um. So, yeah. So I, it's it was just an, the fracturing for me. I think that. Disney, having, having Disney coming over, over the horizon, you've got Amazon, Netflix, you've got Filmstruck, as you mentioned there, which is probably a, a good one for for the niche market, really. But mm. you've got all of these ones that are coming, and you can imagine that you know people are going to be fighting tooth and nail for for the rights for different ones, and and there's just not that all one suited format or even um, place that you can go to really, and that, that's a, that's a that's a concern for me. See, there's also the flip side of it where you've got the problem of hardware because yeah. my TV, for instance, has, has got Amazon and Netflix built into it. But for Filmstruck, I have to go to my Apple TV to watch it. Right. And 
obviously that's still got um, Netflix and what have you on there like that as well. But then when I wanted to watch Fandor, I had to watch that on my PC. Right. Yeah. Yeah. You well, know. I I'm yeah, I'm a, I'm a I'm a, a Googler, so I've got Chromecast and obviously you can't yeah. Amazon. Yeah. So. Yeah. Yeah. So it's scattershot as well as as far as that's concerned. So you don't just gotta think what you want to watch. You've also gotta think, can I actually see it? Um, you know, stuff like uh your consoles, your PS fours and stuff, um, they've always got Netflix or uh, YouTube on there. But mm. Amazon, that doesn't pop up on a few um, you know, you've certainly got no film structs or anything like that. And I feel like they're really missing out. You know, they they really should be looking at this and trying to unify it. And perhaps one sort of like a podcast capture, catcher, if you like, you know, you're still mm. subscribed to these, but you have some sort of program that brings them all under one hood. Yeah, you get that in other things, don't you? Like um, cloud storage, you can get yeah. like an, an overall hood and you, mm-hmm. know, you can draw your Dropbox and your Google Drives and your... Um, and and one box and one drive as well that you can yeah. collect together. That, that that might be a, a good way to do it because I just say that is that is going that's going to be the problem moving forward. I think and you mentioned about um, your, your kid's four year old thing as well. That that was my trail of thought, which was go go back twenty minutes and you might hear what I was thinking. <laughs> <laughs> um, was that the um, he, the cinema engineer that we use? It was saying that the. Um, the bandwidth to use for for a lot of kids' movies is quite low. I mean, obviously, cartoons aren't too, aren't too bad because you're not needing that detail. But mm. have you noticed anything on particular older things on Netflix? The the bandwidth that they use is actually quite um, restrictive, so you're not getting um, a decent quality picture. And sometimes sometimes as well. Yeah, that's it. That's why I prefer to have uh, Blu-ray. You know, I prefer to always have the hard copy in my hand. Uh, yeah, if it's something I really love. You know, um, I mean, I'm a real big Arrowhead, for instance. Um, Arrow Video, they do, it's a cult label, yeah. and it's an art house label. So it's just got me completely nailed. And I've been following them now for 10 years, and I've got every copy, every, every film that they've released, I've got it. You know, and that's that's in hundreds now. I've, I don't even know how many that is. <laughs> I, <laughs> but I, can, imagine, I can imagine your room, it, it's probably similar to mine. I can imagine it being bookcases full. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'm always looking for the best kind of bookcase. Um, <laughs> you know, it's a good job I haven't got an Ikea near me because otherwise I've just been there every week. Fantastic. Um, let, but let's move back to a bit about the um, when you watch it three or four times and yeah. you, you're doing that for, for your research purposes. What other things do you do to research the movie before you, you get into um, into the recording? Read. I read a lot, <laughs> but not not read um, books on it as such, you know, because obviously um, time is always restrictive. So just do a lot of research on the Internet. Um, I've got a lot of friends on Twitter that are good film friends, you know, and a lot of them have written books themselves. So right. if ever I'm needing to pick somebody's brains about something, I know that I've got a network there that I can just ask, you know, never be afraid to ask any of these people because it's just a wellspring of information um tend to steer clear of wikipedia because mm. you can never guarantee that it's 100 percent correct anyway <laughs> yeah yeah uh, yeah i can imagine being caught short with that to be honest yeah 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 you, you could make yourself look really stupid there um I've, <laughs> I've still got piles of books myself on um italian cinema and stuff like that because it's just not covered that much on the internet anyway mm. um but lots of books on 70s cinema as well but that's just stuff that I've grown up with over the years, you know. Few, few on horror like um, Ken Newman's um, tome, if you like. So, mm. yeah, stuff that you just know. Yeah, and how do you um, when when you've read when you've read and when you've researched when you've watched it three or four times and you're sitting there and you're recording your podcast? Mm. Do you have anything in front of you, or is it all just from memory? Do you just just rhyme off what you're going? I know yours <laughs> is kind of kind of a fluid podcast anyway. Um, but um, do you have anything in front of you, or, or how, how, does, how does that work? We tend to have a skeleton. <laughs> the notes, <laughs> the notes are ridiculous because usually there's not a great deal there. Um, the notes usually say something like, um, "It'll say the show number and the show title." Yeah, um, and crap. Then, it, <laughs> <laughs> then it'll say intro or who's hosting it, and then that's it. Intro. Um, it's Ali this week, and um, then it'll be kind of a big blank and then feedback at the bottom, you know, where we put in what we've got on Twitter or emails. Sometimes we'll have to um, write stuff down just because it could be some details about actors or directors, you know, especially if it's um, something that's out of our comfort zone. 
you know, it's if it's something we're not too okay with, then yeah, fair enough. But it's usually a big blank of paper. <laughs> That's probably the best way to be because then it's coming literally naturally from you from your own head, really, rather than sounding like a script. I would have thought. Yeah, that's it. I mean, uh, I've I've heard podcasts before where you can tell that they're just talking straight from the the page, you know, because they're actually stopping and sort of looking down and then carrying on with the next line. Yeah, R- rolling into the next sentence and uh, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> and then going. Does that make any sense? <laughs> Yeah, you've got to put a full stop. If we put an edit in there, put a full stop and we'll be fine. <laughs> uh, oh, fantastic. So um, going back, you've, you've obviously, you've, you've mentioned about your, um, you've mentioned about your kind of your, your favourite types of genre and things. Hmm. If you were to suggest to a newbie a particular, say, three films that you would um, ask people to watch, what what would they be from from your kind of favourite catalogue? Wow. Um Right. It doesn't have to necessarily be your best films, just, <laughs> just like for someone to get into like a particular genre, whether it be an art house film or or something that would be accessible to someone. As far as horror, I would go for The Haunting, um, 1963 film uh, directed by Ray Wise. Um, it's possibly the most scary film you'll ever see. It's a black and white film, though, so it'll put people off straight away, especially Ali. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, in that film, you don't see anything at all. It's all in your mind. All you've got is some amazing camera work and some great sound design. And mm. it's 1963, and you think, how the hell did you pull this off? Um, it still stands today. Sometimes I can put the Blu-ray on, and I'll not get as far as the menu. <laughs> the menu oh, comes God. on and think, ah, I'm not ready for this today. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, those are the type I actually like. I, I, I'm not a big... I, I love the thing. I, I do yes. love the thing. It's Absolutely. a fantastic movie, but... I do love the psychological aspects of stuff and um, something like, like that is definitely something I would look, look into probably during the morning, I would have thought. <laughs> yeah. Well, that's the thing. The stuff that actually makes you think you've seen something like Texas Chainsaw Massacre, for instance, you know, I think they're a far cleverer film than something that will show you gratuitous stuff. Yeah. Yeah. You know, I mean, everybody always says, oh, yeah, I remember seeing all the blood in Texas Chainsaw Massacre and there's virtually nothing. If if anything at all, thinking about it. Well, we but, have that. It, it, there was also um, this is going up, not off track, but um, in TV. I, I remember when I was growing up, there was a, a TV show in, in um, the UK, and in America it was called um, MI Five, but it was called Spooks over here. Oh yeah, yeah. And the, there was a famous actress who, in the first season, had first her head season. put into the chip fat. Yes, and yeah. it didn't happen. It happened. Oh, but you it was heard. Off, all it was off screen. You heard yeah. it, and and the amount of complaints that they got from that at the time, and people refer back to that when they, whenever Spooks is mentioned, mm. and it's like that didn't actually happen. You didn't see it, uh, but people in the heads, as you say, it's it's, it's really it, it's a really interesting psychological experiment that in some ways because you know it's amazing what people in their own heads have made that up and and yeah, and, filling and the blanks. Fear. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. What else? Well, what would my top three recommendations be? Um, Brazil. By Terry Gilliam. Um, it's a great film from 1985. It's a dystopian future where steampunk, before steampunk was actually a thing, steampunk was all over the place in Terry Gilliam's Brazil. Um, but you've got a man that's trying to break out of the horrible job that he's in. And the only way he can do this is through his dreams. And uh, of course, then it being Terry Gilliam, it just means his dreams end up being reality and it gets really confusing. Um, great film. And it's got um, Robert De Niro in it as a plumber, so that's always a good thing. <laughs> yeah, at least he's not, um, not a parent or a grandparent. Oh, or whatever, so. What is he doing? His career has just completely stopped, hasn't it? He's just <laughs> given up. He's, got, he's gone, oh, yeah, I can do comedy. No, you can't, Robert. You are terrible. <laughs> <laughs> Fantastic. So that's number two. So what would number three be? Um, I would have to go with my old stalwart, and it'd have to be Blade Runner. Oh, um, right, okay, yeah. Enough said. You don't, yeah. you don't even have to describe that. Just everybody no. knows. <laughs> no. Did you Did you hear about the, um, or get to see any clips of the secret cinema of Blade Runner? No, I didn't. No, I did know that they were doing it, but 
just too far north for it. I'm sorry. Yeah, yeah, same here. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm probably across the way from you. I'm, I'm over in Cumbria, so it's. Uh, oh yeah. yeah, yeah. So I'm, I'm not. I'm, <laughs> it's, it's a long way to London. <laughs> yeah, we're like the place that time forgot. <laughs> exactly, exactly. Okay, so that's fantastic. Um, also, something that just for myself, uh, and I'm sure people would like to be interested. There was a couple of things that you mentioned on one of the podcasts where you said that. You've, uh, your home cinema is fantastic. I want oh, to know. Yeah. What, I want to know what it is. <laughs> All right. Um, at the moment, the the TV is a Samsung um, sixty inch four uh, K screen. Um, I can't remember the model number because it's about as long as your arm. Yeah, and it's probably the... some Sam F two six four four six zero Z. Yeah, and the you know I can't even remember what the um, surround amp is, but it's a Dolby Atmos amp, and it's um, a Pioneer one. And it's 7.1. And that is a recent one. I've, I've had to upgrade it because the other one that I used to have had finally given up. It, it, but it didn't hold me anything because I'd had it for, what, uh, hmm, about a decade at least. <laughs> <laughs> it probably more, actually, thinking about it. But, yeah. yeah um, so it, sorry. It, wasn't, it wasn't a case of accidentally pushing it out on, on off the table by intention. <laughs> I need a new one. <laughs> no, you, you couldn't accidentally push these anywhere. It weighs a ton. It feels like it's a washing machine. You've got concrete slab in bottom. I'm sure of it. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe. Oh, I accidentally put a sledgehammer to it. <laughs> Normally, I could probably ream these things off, but it's so early in the morning, and I've been up for 60 hours now. So <laughs> Yeah, no, I, I understand. That's completely uh, understandable. So, um, so finally... Just um, to finish the, this this interview off, thank you very much for coming. It's been a pleasure to speak to you. It's been great. Um, what have you got in the in the coming uh, weeks and coming months um, with uh, Film Guff and anything else you've got coming up, really? We've got a few authors coming on that are um, quite interesting because they go really in-depth and there's one chap <laughs> that's probably recorded our longest podcast so far. As the podcast recording itself was two hours, 25 minutes, It'll probably cut down to about an hour and I would say about an hour and 50 afterwards. But that's still going to be our longest one. Okay, we'll check out that. That should be, I'm really looking forward to that. And I've definitely got you on my uh, my pocket cast list anyway. So um, how, how can we find you on um, on the social world? Well, it's at FilmGuff. I think it's actually capitalised as well. I think it's um, capital F and capital G. So, okay. but at Film Guff on Twitter, that's usually the easy, easiest way to hit us up. Um, I'm on Twitter as at Kevney, that's C E V N I, and Ali's on there as at corn underscore wolf. Um, we've, we're on filmguff.net. You, um, the, the website itself gives you all the information you need and has links to all the episodes. Um, you can all, also catch us on Letterboxd. We're on Letterboxd as well, which is a really good um, film networking site. All right, okay. I'll check that out as well. Fantastic. So, again, thank you very much for coming on, Kev. It's been much appreciated. It's um, been great, Kev. Yeah. I'm, I'm sure that we'll we'll probably speak again at some point. Feel free to, to get in touch if you, if you need anything from me or you want me to come on at any point. I'm sure I'll be Definitely. happy to do that. Um, but for now, thank you very much. Thank you. Bye.